Hey, welcome to the last video of Project Camp Season 3. In the previous video, you saw us removing this big batch of invasive mimosa trees next to the office. They were moved to prevent the little house from burning down in case of a fire. And as a test, we cut the trees at one meter above the ground. I know it looked weird, but it's done because it makes it easier to remove the sprouts that grow back, since you don't have to bend to the floor to take them out. We've done this a few times, taking out these sprouts, but they continue to grow back, so it's time for the next step a digger to remove all the stumps and their roots. And after that, we can plant new fruit trees because, well, it's tasty and those trees are also much more fire resilient. But before that, we want to save the small native oaks that started to grow here. Uh, so we are removing them to replant them later on. Here is one oak uh, that has some brambles around it. Okay. So we now have this. Now one is done, uh, it's time for doing it the others. And then the digger came. It's impressive to see a digger working, everything looks easier. The digger just finished up for today, uh, he did all this amazing job, uh, tomorrow he will continue on the bottom part there. What are you doing, Guy? I'm removing the small ones so they don't sprout. Since the, the shovel is too big for these ones, it's better to do it, to do it by hand. Cool. We have removed all the stumps, uh, now we have them scattered around, we need to push them aside and starting to remove the slope so we don't have a, such a steep part.
The stumps of the mimosas are now gone, so this is what it looks like from above. It's quite impressive to see the amount of energy it takes to remove invasive tree species. But now we can go on to the next step. So we have here these five buckets. We're going to go to the neighbor George and get some cow manure. Just what we need for the trees in the trees. And when we got here, it turned out we didn't need the buckets. We just dumped a shitload in our precious pickup. That's definitely more than enough fertilizer for the soil for the new trees. So as you can see, we didn't need the bucket. The neighbor were so nice enough that they just dumped the, the whole cow uh, product manure manure in our in the pickup so now it's time to unload it we're gonna make a pile right here Okay, so here we are, in the place that Benjamin took out all the roots. It's been now a quite a muddy field because it has been raining for a couple of days. But actually we are ready for the next step. So as you see here, the angle is quite steep as we have it now. And the road is way more smooth. So what we're going to do is to make this all on the same level as the road. So then we can start to give it more shape. But then the digger didn't came. But you know what came? Rain. Lots and lots of rain. Inside the office, no problem. But outside, yeah. Water flushing down over the fields, eroding the soil and creating many small streams that flush the sand and earth away. In a short time it created pretty deep channels as you can see here. This is the thing we hopefully will fix in this video. And the beloved waterfall was on steroids again. This is actually pretty cool to see. And there was so much wind that our workspace tarp teared apart. It kind of sucks. Yeah, we can't really work on the land when the weather is like this. So we decided to take a break and solve another problem that we collected. We don't have a real place to hang our clothes beside these kind of nails. So now we want to make something about it. We have already made some projects reusing materials from waste that we generate. But this time we are going to go one step forward and recycle our own plastic waste in Project Camp to transform it into a new product for the project. We try to avoid as much plastic as we can, but sometimes just cannot go around. We have used products from the community a few times, like the kitchen roof, toilet or sockets, but we never made objects here. And now we are gonna recycle the plastic from Bread Camp on the spot and running fully on solar energy. Let me first show you our waste area, because the first step for recycling is to collect our material. Here is where all our waste comes every day. These buckets with regular waste get empty every week. But up here we have the material that we will use for our project now. This is all the plastic we have been collecting in the last seasons. It's heavy. We have been collecting mainly hard plastics, especially number two and five, high density polyethylene and polypropylene, two of the most used plastics in the houses. We ask the people to clean it and take out the labels before we put it in our beams. Let's see what we have in these buckets, but let's find a dry space so then I can properly show you what we have been collecting. So this is all the plastic we have. This is number two polyethylene, this is number five polypropylene. Not bad for a project of 25 people in one season and a half. Thanks in part to the kitchen that this year they were improving a lot our buying system, buying more in bulk, better suppliers, 
but we still have been collecting some of these hard plastics. It's clean, sorted, but for the next steps we need some machinery and for that we are going to use some precious plastic machines. Some of you probably already know what precious plastic means, but sure many of you don't know what I'm talking about. So let me explain you what precious plastic is. Oh, Dave, can you help me? So Dave, hey. I was trying to tell them what is precious plastic? Uh, precious plastic is a project that built machines to recycle plastic. Hmm. So you can uh, have a machine where you throw in plastic waste and something new comes out. Okay, and um, why, why did it start this thing? It uh, started because there was just a lot of plastic waste in the world and not much got recycled, less than 10%. But many people say they want to recycle plastic, but they just don't have the tools. Uh, like here, you can start working with metal or wood if you have the tools, but for plastic you don't really have them. So try to just make the machines so people can recycle. So, do I buy the machines? Uh, no, the machines are all, well you could, but the drawings are shared open source online for free. And so you can download the blueprints and build them yourselves. But if you don't want to build them, we also have an online marketplace where you can um, build, buy them from someone else. So what if the people want to know a bit more about fresh plastic? I would say go to freshplastic.com, you find most of the information. And there's also a whole online community with drawings you can download and a marketplace and a map where you can see all the workspaces around the world. Okay, thank you Dave. So, now that we know what fresh plastic is... You might know it from chopping the mozas or building level 2 houses, but we also recycle plastic and teach others how to do it. When we are not in project camp, we help people to set up their own recycling workspaces. We do events educating people about plastic, or we design recycled plastic products for other precious plastic workspaces. You can find us in the precious plastic map. If you also want to recycle the plastic of your community, let us know and we come in the white van with our machines. But we don't do it like this. We do it like this. And today we are going to recycle the plastic on Project Camp. So, plastic is clean, sort by type. We have this machine that is called an Schroeder machine. That what it does basically is to break down all these big chunks, big lids, plant pots, into small flakes. It's built in a very simple way and designed in order to be as much replicable as possible so everyone in the world can start to recycle plastic. So sometimes we need to cut the pieces because they are quite big and the hopper of the machine is a small area. So we cut them up in smaller pieces and then they shred. One kilo of polypropylene we got from our waste. As you could see, first before it's ready, it takes a lot of space to store it. But now, as soon as we have it is red, almost doesn't take any space. So now that we already shredded all the PP, we're going for HDP. And as you see, we also have some plastics that we cannot avoid here. This, for example, is the jerry can where we normally buy our olive oil in. But we also have bottles like contact lens, liquid or bottle caps from other bottles we had. So let's back to recycling. It's 
see if it is ready. Let's see how much did we get. 871 grams. So now it's time to write down which kind of plastic is in each box to not lose the track so then we know which plastic we are using when injecting. So now we have all our flooded plastic, we finished with this machine, so it's time to swap machine and start to actually melt plastic. Okay, let's open this container up. For the next step in the recycling process, we're going to use an injection machine, which I have right here. It's another machine out of the precious plastic universe. How we do that? I show you right now. So, for this machine, we are using molds. And for each product that you want to have, you need to have a different mold. This time, we designed a product that serves from many places on the land. So the first product we're going to make out of polypropylene. So now we pour the plastic we just shredded into the hopper of the injection machine. Hey. Okay, so that means that the plastic has been heating up for 10 minutes and we're going to now inject the first product. We take off the lid and we connect the mold to the machine. And now, time to inject. No pressure. Luckily, the plastic cools down very fast, so we can already take off the mold. And the product. So this is the mold, how it looks from the inside. Uh, we can make four hooks at the same time. And this mold also has the possibility of changing the type of plastic. Here we have a little piece that says PP, which we will insert in the mold in the middle. But we can also place the HDP. Okay, we have injected some hooks and we're going to bring them now to the workspace container, where Adrian is going to tell you a bit more about the hook. Okay, so here we are. We still need to post process our hook. As you might notice, we don't have the holes to go through to in order to screw it into the wall. So for this mission, we have this little tool where the hook fits exactly. So we drill through, we make the countersink, and then we will have a screw that stays flush with our surface. So the idea from the beginning of the project was to make a product that we could afterwards open source and the people can replicate and that serves as much situations as possible. And we've been working with this in this mold with Fritz from Easy Molds. So you can find a how-to in the Precious Plastic community platform where you can find the drawings of these hooks of this mold for the people to start to recycle plastic into these fantastic hooks. So hooks are ready to be installed and I already know a couple of places that could use one of these hooks. Let me show you. So here, as you can see, is one of the central hanging clothes in the whole project camp. 
we have put some nails was a bit of a temporary solution but that's a bit painful always for the clothes so I'm in the shower. This is another painful place for our towels. Always scared to break my towel when I come here, so... Ready. Nice, soft and waterproof. much better. Now if you want to get inspired for other people around the world recycling plastic make sure to follow the YouTube channel of Fresh Plastic. If you want to make your own hook remember that it's an open source design so you can find all the information in uh, how to in the Fresh Plastic website you can find the link below. If not you can always find a Fresh Plastic workspace around your area and you can collaborate with them you just need to go in the map and find them. Finally, after all the rain, the sun came back, so we could continue planting the trees together. However, now we actually don't really have the time anymore, because it's the season ending and people are heading home. So we wanted to use this precious sunny day so everyone can pack and dry their stuff. It was actually really nice being able to do this on a dry day. Packing a wet tent is just the worst. And all together we also tidied up and cleaned the whole camp. And it was the last day of the season, so that night, the people organized a fancy dinner to celebrate. It was really nice. Here's a sneak peek on what it was like. Also, most people ever at once in the sketchy ruin and still didn't break down. Maybe it's not so sketchy after all. <laughs> What's happening today, Adrian? Everyone is leaving. Not everyone. Many people. Who's not leaving? I'm not. This is a lot from you. Ciao ciao. <laughs> ciao 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 At this point, there are still a few people in the camp and it was a sunny day, so finally the big dig came for the next step. We're going to reshape the slope so the difference in height is less steep. At this point, everything is still quite wet and muddy, but it doesn't seem to be a problem for him.
so we finished up smoothening this area and now we're gonna take on the step of digging the cable and we are making use of Bruno being here with his big machine digging a cable from the office to base camp As you see, this is the trench, 80 centimeters deep, and we're gonna have the internet, the water, and the electricity in here. So the cables will be placed later on. A bit of brown. Treasures? No treasures yet. Not yet. What do you think, Julie? We got a rainbow. I don't know what I think. So we have dig a trench from base camp to the office, so we can dig all the pipes now. And then in the future we don't need to open the soil again, so we can let the grass and the trees grow in the top layer. But let me show you first what we are going to lay here. A connection of water. Electricity and internet. Electricity and internet go inside this pipe. With the internet still not clear how we are going to connect everything, but since we are already laying the electricity inside the pipe, we are going to connect already the Ethernet cable for the future to see how we connect everything. Uh, when it comes down to infrastructure, we have a lot of pipes that are mainly made out of plastic. Everything is wrapped in plastic, cables, protections, so um, we are kind of new, so we don't know many other alternatives. Let us know if you know something else. But for now, we're gonna install the standard in the area. The leakage part coming. Pipe is laid. Inside the pipe there's this thread to pull the two cables through the pipe. It's our longest distance that we pull a cable through. So if we lose this thread, it's gonna be very painful. Pull smooth! Pull! How far do you think we are? So meanwhile Adrian is sorting that out, I'm going to start digging. Okay, so right now I'm standing on top of the cable, so that one is covered. And that brings us to the next point, which is this line. You don't see a line? Mm, this way. This line intentionally was gonna be a swill, but due to the lack of manpower and timing of the wetness, we are gonna make it a ditch. It might not look as a proper swill in the end, but we're gonna give it a try with little manpower and a quite difficult soil to work on. So. 
This will even look too. Do you think we're gonna make it? <laughs> yeah, just a couple of meters more. Hmm. <laughs> We tried, yeah we really did, but it was already late and it started to rain again, then it got dark, it was not realistic to continue. It's been very rainy this week, but we realized the forecast for tomorrow is sunny and we're in a rush. So we invited another digger. Let me tell you something about the trees we actually bought. We chose to have a good variation based on the consumption that we have during the season. We also made sure that the trees actually give fruits during the season when we are with more people. Let me grab them. Okay, so this is our big tree family. The one that we are going to need to take care of for the next years. And we are all going to take care of them a bit differently. For example, here the citrus trees. We are going to plant them a bit higher up in the field. They are closer to base camp. This means that they get less frost because it's less cold up here than down in the field. Further we have here a cherry tree which we want to give a bit more space so it can grow bigger. But then we have for example here the pears and also the apples and they don't need that much space, they are a bit smaller. So we decided to plant them on the swales, on top of the swales. Okay so as you see the swales are done, nice and smooth. Really nice that the digger came to give us a hand. And actually I will explain you later how this works because we're gonna plant some trees. But not alone, with some friends. Okay, so as you can see, we found quite some friends. Luckily, because all the other people already left. And these people are coming from the area. To make the job easier, we divided them in teams. So we have a digger team. But we also have a manure team. And then Adrian and I will be distributing all the trees. <laughs> and the dogs will run around. Okay, so to not lose any time, we're gonna start. Like that? Yeah. This, this kind of hard pack down below, it seems like it would be easy in the mud. We're digging some holes, like one meter diameter, and like 40 centimeters deep. And then we'll bring some manure in. Step number two, mm -hmm. put some manure.
Okay. Should see? Pointed to north. This one. This, this one. Thing. Yeah. Ah, cool. And you don't Why? need to cut that. Because this is the womb of the plant and you don't want to expose it to the sun. With the one pointing to the north. Learning by doing. So, here we have plum tree. Or in Portuguese, a brunheiro. Did I say good? A brunheiro? I've planted the passenger. Um, they give lovely plumes or perches, I don't know, but they give something. We have a, a golden apple tree. Golden delicious, I think we would call it. <laughs> We're a cherry tree, cerejeira, peach tree that I just planted. But we still have a lot of wood chips. We are using some wood chips to cover the soil in the base of the trees. Let's go. And finally, we are seeding some cover crops to help holding the soil in place. I'm just playing with the dog, I'm not doing anything useful. You will get a lot of clover in your belly. <laughs> But Rita, are you feeding the soil or feeding the dog? <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> All right, finally, the job is done. All the trees are planted. The landscape has changed a lot. And now we just need to wait for nature to do its thing during the winter. But actually, this landscape is made in a certain way. Let me explain you from the top. We made this wheel on top to collect the water. And another one below. Both are almost horizontal, so the water doesn't flow out fast. Then we made the third one, which is more inclined. And here we added a ditch to connect them, and made sure the water on the road can flow in as well. So the water should flow something like this. And in the bottom one, it should flow faster, because of the angle. This is done because we don't want the ground to get too wet close to the ruin, because it's half in the ground and will leak inside. But we can always add obstacles to slow down the water flow if we want. Finally, the water will flow out there into the big field. And most of the trees are planted on the bottom of the slope, so they can benefit from the water that soaks into the ground. All of this should give the rainwater more time to absorb into the ground and keep it more moist for the fruit trees throughout the year. Now we just have to wait for the sun and the rain to do their magic. Quite exciting to see how this will behave when the winter rain comes in. It's pretty cool to imagine a big amount of fruit trees here. Since we have base camp here, community center here, and the future living area here, where the big trailer is built, so many people could benefit from it. Okay, enough about the trees, enough about the season of Project M. That was it. We're gonna now celebrate it with a nice hot chocolate and some cake. <laughs> All right, so that was it, the end of season three. Uh, most people already left, we just finished up the project. And we actually have a few finished projects towards the end of the season with the water, like the lake and this one. So kind of curious to see how it's going to behave when all the winter rain comes. And we actually already had a bit of rain coming in and the swale is holding it in pretty good. So it seems to work. But in general, if you want to see and follow how the projects will go in the winter and the amount of rain that comes in and if it all works, make sure to support on Patreon because we'll post a few special winter updates there. Spoiler alert, we also found the tube that goes from the lake down. So yeah, that's going to be exciting. And also, just in general, special thanks for everyone supporting on Patreon. It really helps the project a lot, even though sometimes it might seem a bit unusual for instance voting for the color of the pig trailer but we like it otherwise we wouldn't ask you so thank you a lot for supporting and finally we also have applications online if you want to help out next year in season four so a bunch of things you can help out with uh, cooking help landscaping or renovating this ruin we also have a bunch of new applications for a graphic designer so it's going to be a very cool diverse team um, so yeah, go to support.projectcomp.com if you want to come here and help us out. 
And finally, thank you guys for watching these videos every Monday. It really helps a lot having this big audience uh, watching these videos and using the documentation, the research module. Still a long way to go, but I think we have a good foundation with you guys on board. So uh, thanks a lot. We'll be back mid-April probably. First video, a recap video. So make sure if you ever thought about it to subscribe because then uh, you're gonna see when we post a new video and it should be a cool one. That's it for now, thanks for watching. Have a good winter and we'll see you next season. Or in the winter updates, ciao.